Yes, good afternoon, Ruth. A absolutely. A false flag is where you uh, say that an attack is going to be happening and it's going to be perpetrated by your enemy when, in fact, you're actually preparing it yourself. And uh, because you've already said that somebody else is going to do it, then that is the cover that you can then blame uh, the other side. And, and the Russians have frequently done this uh, in Syria, which I've seen at first hand. And as you've described, the false flag attack for the Zaporizhia nuclear power station um, could be absolutely devastating. And Russia positioning troops around Zaporizhia, you know, it is, is bonkers, although it is unlikely that a stray shell or missile uh, could uh, set the reactors off to have a, a devastating impact like uh, Chernobyl or Fukushima. If the Russians have actually wired with explosives the reactors, as some Rus Russian generals have suggested, and that blows up, that could have a significant impact radiation across Europe, as the Russians have said. Um, and some, like Tobias Elwood, head of the Defence Committee, have suggested, and I agree with him, this could trigger Article 5, because all that contamination would fall on NATO countries here, that if we put the, um, the, the reactors themselves aside, if you disconnect the power, um, then the cooling, which is so important to keep the spent fuel rods um, from from going critical and melting down and and catching fire, then that is a huge problem, and and that is what the Russians are suggesting they're doing. And this is not a trivial task. Um, you know, to shut down a, a nuclear power station takes weeks and months of planning and weeks and months of actual activity. So to you know sort of do it in a couple of days is is absolutely um, pl playing with fire here. And if there is no power going out to southern Ukraine, then that, that again is going to have a huge impact. And the weaponization of, of this power station, which is completely contrary to the Geneva Convention and, and the rules of war, which the Russians seem to, to completely ignore, will only absolutely make the situation worse. And, uh, and if Russia is trying to bring others into this fight, well, it is doing exactly that. And I rather fear that some of our, our leaders in Europe are being terribly silent at the moment. I'm only hearing Anton Guterres, head of the UN, and, uh, and President Erdogan of Turkey actually getting stuck in here. This is the most important thing that's happening in, the, in Europe, if not the world at the moment. And everybody should be focusing on it to try and de-escalate so that we don't get this Ar Armageddon, which is admittedly the worst possible case that could happen here. But anything less than that, could be devastating as well. Well, I think what's really interesting is what Anton Guterres, the, the UN Secretary General, has said has been that he wants a non-military zone around uh, this uh, power station. He wants it kind of almost in an, an enclave where, where, where things don't happen to it. Um, we spoke to uh, somebody from the Ukrainian side uh, last week who was saying, look, no, Ukraine wants to take this back. We want to fight the Russians back to get hold of it. And, you know, I, I think for laymen like me, the idea of having forces and troops trying to, to retake a nuclear power station sounds terrifying. Ruth, absolutely, it is. And, and, and you know, I, I, I sympathise with the Ukrainian military, absolutely, that they want this back. It, it is theirs. Uh, but that could create absolute disaster, as you, as you quite rightly say. And I do, in this case, support um, the head of the UN. You know, I, I haven't always, but actually a demilitarized zone. These should be demilitarized zones anyway. Um, you know, the rules of war protect power stations like this, crystal assets, churches, mosques, et cetera. But unfortunately, Russia just ignores it. So having, having a demilitarized zone there, I think with UN people, I, I hesitate to say UN forces in there to protect it, must be the way ahead. The absolute last thing that we need is is an escalation of the fighting around there. And as I've said, you know, if Russia turns this into some sort of improvised nuclear device, for want of a better word, you know, it's going to have an impact across Europe and could very well, you know, apart from NATO supporting Ukraine quite rightly with all it can at the moment, you know, this well could bring NATO in directly into the fight, which I'm sure absolutely nobody wants at this stage. Well, let's bring in the Ukrainian MP Andrei Odsichuk now, who's on the line. Uh, Andrei, thank you for, for joining us. 
Um, in terms of this nuclear plant, are, are you worried that there is now an operation going on by the Russians to disconnect it from the grid? <laughs> good, good afternoon. And so first of all, we are not worried at all for the last couple of months, because if we will be worried, we will not be able to fight. Uh, we know Russians very well. And uh, when we're discussing this quite emotional story about nuclear plant, uh, you shall remember what had been happened during the last couple of months. Remember May, uh, April, uh, even beginning of June, uh, Kremlin was threatening the West, openly threatening with nuclear weapons. It was done several, several times by Medvedev and by other top Russian officials. And if you mention for the last couple of months, they closed their mouth. They're not using this language anymore. And I may assume that it is because of China. Uh, Mr. Xi Jinping probably influenced uh, on that. Uh, and, and do you think now, then that, yes. that what has substituted that is this kind of nuclear blackmail that's Absolutely. happening ar around this power station? They're, they're trying just alternative option how to blackmail the West, because as you see, they can do nothing with the conventional weapons against Ukrainian people and Ukrainian army. Just nothing. So that's why they are looking for some alternative options favorite KGB or FSB approach of blackmail. And uh, definitely the Parisian nuclear plant uh, is using uh, by them as uh, one of these uh, possible tools of threatening uh, West. But I don't think that, we will, that they will succeed in this story uh, because um, I think for everyone in this world it's understood that it is blackmailing, that it is Russians who are shelling these nuclear power stations it is Russians who occupy it and keep mm. full control over these stations. I think it's understood for everyone. So um, okay. I may assume that risk exists, but the risk is low.